All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. And today we are going to be talking about one of the biggest racial issues in modern America today. And it's unfortunate that we have to take it to this point. We have to talk about this, but it, I mean, it, it's an issue that's plaguing modern American society. I mean, I, as a white man, cannot sit by any longer and be a perpetrator of a racial system that is actively harming and destroying the black community here in America. To be this racist, to be this insensitive has been a complete disgusting mark on my history and throughout this video I want to take the time to really fix my past. I want to admit to something before we get started in this video and this is a very serious thing. Um, I unfortunately have committed uh, two very severe internet crimes. Uh, digital blackface, I've worn it, and also digital animal face. For instance, if you go to my Twitter, at Subdoptimus right now, this is my profile picture. This is Donkey from Shrek throwing the four up, right? Not only uh, do I have to admit that I'm not a donkey, so I've committed animal face, but I'm also not a black man named Eddie Murphy who voiced him, so I've now committed digital blackface and black voice. My apologies, guys, but yeah, apparently this is the, the, the big racial issue in America today, man, is digital blackface. And CNN decided they needed to write an entire article about it, you know, going into detail about what exactly it is, what the problem is, and why you, as a white, are a fucking racist. So today, we're gonna go on a journey to describe why you are the biggest scumbag on the internet, you white Yankee devil. And we're gonna figure out uh, just exactly how digital blackface is destroying modern America, so... Maybe you shared that viral video of Kimberly Sweet Brown Wilkins telling a reporter after narrowly escaping an apartment fire, Ain't nobody got time for that! Perhaps you posted that meme of supermodel Tyra Banks exploding in anger on America's Next Top Model. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. Or maybe you've simply posted a couple popular gifts, such as the one of NBA great Michael Jordan crying or of drag queen RuPaul declaring, Girl, if you're black and you've shared such images online, you get a pass. But if you're white, you may have inadvertently perpetuated one of the most insidious forms of contemporary racism. All right, so yeah, the argument here that's being made is essentially like, I'm white, right? So if I were to go on Twitter and I were to, you know, use a gif of a black person reacting to something or laughing or saying something right as like a relatable moment in a conversation, I am now committing digital blackface. And the reason this is, is because terminally online weirdos who write articles like this have now decided that the internet is so fucking serious and it's such a realistic depiction of everybody's life. To these people, you know, getting off the internet, like going out to the park for a walk or something is just inconceivable because, you know, the world doesn't exist outside of the internet. That's the only, like, actual reasoning I can come up with to why anyone would think digital blackface is like a real problem or really exists in the first place. So, digital blackface is a practice where white people co-opt online expressions of black imagery, uh, slang, catchphrases, or culture to convey comic relief or express emotions. These expressions, what one commentator calls racialized reactions, are mainstays in Twitter feeds, TikTok videos, and Instagram reels, and are among the most popular internet memes. Digital blackface involves white people play acting at being black, says Lauren Michelle Jackson, an author and cultural critic in an essay for Teen Vogue. Yeah, CNN has stooped so low they are actually citing essays for Teen Vogue as, like, genuine cultural commentary. Uh, Jackson says the internet thrives on white people laughing at exaggerated displays of blackness, reflecting a tendency among some to see black people as walking hyperbole. If you're still not sure how to define digital blackface, Jackson offers a guide. She says it, quote, includes displays of emotions stereotyped as excessive, so happy, so sassy, so ghetto, so loud, our dial is on 10 all the time. Rarely are black characters afforded subtle traits or feelings. Many white people choose images of black people when it comes to expressing exaggerated emotions on social media media, a burden that black people didn't ask for, she says. Quote, we are your sass, your nonchalance, your fury, your delight, your annoyance, your happy dance, your diva, your shade, your yas moments. Uh, Jackson writes, the weight of reaction gifting period rests on our shoulders. All right, so this is perhaps the most actually mentally fragile shit I've ever heard in my life. White people using reaction gifts and images of black people to express memes and exaggerated emotions on social media is, quote-unquote, a burden that black people didn't ask for. Huh. Okay. I I'm thinking, right? I'm thinking of some burdens that maybe black people didn't ask for in history throughout the United States. Let's go ahead and see if any of these are maybe 
as bad, if not worse, than, you know, using a fucking meme on the internet. I wonder if, you know, being beaten, raped, sold into slavery, killed for trying to escape, dehumanized, not being considered people, being forced for labor 12 hours a day. I wonder if that was a burden that, you know, all these black people from the 1800s and stuff when slavery was still legal, I wonder if that's a burden they asked for, right? You think maybe that was worse than seeing a white dude use a picture of Michael Jordan on Twitter? Huh, I don't know. Uh, well, let's think, uh, let's think of another couple examples here. Huh, okay. Well, let's take another one. I wonder if all of those black people in Tulsa who were beaten, killed, had their fucking houses burned down, their businesses, their churches, their schools destroyed by white mobs that were appointed as deputies by the sheriffs in the area. I wonder if they, you know, I wonder if they think that digital blackface is an issue that maybe they've had to suffer through. I wonder if that, I wonder if that would be considered a problem to them. I wonder if Emmett Till, you know, the kid who was falsely accused, who was a 14 year old boy, might I add, I, I wonder if he would think that, you know, digital blackface is a real big issue for the black community after he was mutilated, shot, and lynched at the age of 14 after being falsely accused of whistling at a white woman in a store. I wonder what I wonder what he and his parents would, would have to say about digital blackface and how big of an issue it is. Like, it just, I don't know. I feel like there may have been a couple of issues in American society in the past that black people have had to deal with, unfortunately, that may or may not have been a burden that black people didn't ask for. Now, let's go ahead and compare those burdens that black people didn't ask for to the horrific burden of having to see a fucking picture of Kobe Bryant on a white kid's profile online. I, I, I wonder which one's worse, right? And it's also insane because, like, this also implies, too, in the article, that the only race of people on the planet who have exaggerated displays of emotions and, like, you know, they're uh, apparently, quote-unquote, so happy, so sassy, so ghetto, and so loud, their dial is on 10 all the time. According to this article, it would have you believe that the only people who do that are black people, which, to me, seems pretty more fucking racist than any white kid using an ain't nobody got time for that gift to react to something. The idea that all black people do is just be loud and expression all the time seems a little bit more racially motivated than the bullshit you're trying to say we're doing is racist, right? I don't know. Some may say posting a video of Sweet Brown saying, oh Lord Jesus, it's a fire is just for laugh. Why overthink, uh, why overthink it, you know? Why give people yet another excuse for labeling white people racist for the most innocuous behaviors? Wow, hold on, let's pause right there. That is the most intelligent sentence written in the entire article. Why give people yet another excuse for labeling white people racists for the most innocuous behaviors? It's almost like they had a fucking breakthrough right there and then it just in the next sentence just slips right out and we'll get into that but exactly why give people yet another excuse to go around labeling all white people as racists for well in this instance using a reaction gift that is of a black person it's almost like yeah just going around randomly labeling everyone a racist for the most innocuous behaviors actually does more damage to race relations you know it doesn't actually mend them it doesn't make black people and white people get along any better it's not helping solve any race relation issue that we may have even in in modern society here in America, it is set to further divide people. And that's what I wish people really understood. Black, white, brown, doesn't matter, right? When you read an article like this, this is specifically designed to make white people feel bad about doing something online that's innocent, and it's also designed to make black people who are reading it distrust and think less of white people online who are doing things like this. It does nothing to actually fix any problem. It does nothing to address a real issue. Keep in mind, there are still many instances and examples of racial issues that still persist in modern American society. But those aren't what are being focused on here by CNN. It's the one thing possible they could write about that is a non-issue because they can use this to divide you even better. Anyway, but critics, hold on, I, hold on. Sorry, I got a phone call. But critics say digital blackface is wrong because it's a modern day repackaging of minstrel shows, a racist form of entertainment popular in the 19th century. That's when white actors' faces darkened with burnt cork entertained audiences by playing black characters as bumbling happy-go-lucky simpletons. That practice continued in the 20th century on hit radio shows such as Amos and Andy. Put simply, digital blackface is 21st century mist and thrillsy. Historical blackface has truly never ended, and Americans have yet to actively confront their racist past to this day, Aaron Wong writes in an academic paper on the topic. In fact, minstrel blackface has emerged into even more subtle forms of racism that are now glorified all over the internet. Wong says that digital blackface is wrong because it, quote, culturally appropriates the language and expressions of black people for entertainment while dismissing the severity of every Everyday instances of racism black people encounter, such as police brutality, job discrimination, and educational inequity. No. 
No, it doesn't. It does not dismiss the severity of everyday instances of racism black people encounter to post a fucking reaction meme on the internet. The fact that there are people who unironically believe this is insane. Like, how online do you have to, like, how terminally online do you have to be to genuinely believe that real-life blackface that existed for centuries is the same thing as someone using a reaction gif on the internet? Please explain to me how, you know, the intent the execution, anything, is similar whatsoever. Because it's fucking not. It's actually ridiculous that people say stupid shit like this. And then they get to write for massive platforms like CNN and actually get thousands of people to read this shit. It's actually pathetic. In trying to define digital blackface, it depends on who you talk to. The standard for some is comparable to what one Supreme Court justice once said when asked for his test on corn. I know it when I see it. This guidance might help if a white person shares an image online that perpetuates stereotypes of black people as loud, dumb, hyper-violent, or hypersexual, they've entered digital blackface territory. And yet even with that definition, it's hard to figure out exactly what is and isn't digital blackface. This is the challenge that Elizabeth Halford faces. Halford, a brand designer, wrote an apologetic essay in 2020 about how she made a meme out of Wilkins, ain't nobody got time for that catchphrase, and sent someone a gif of the singer Beyonce repeating, I'm not bossy, I'm the boss. Quote, I've engaged in digital blackface, Halford wrote. Quote, I've laughed at people of color on the news facing horrifying crime and disaster and loss. I've appropriated black trauma as punchlines and peeled their faces off to put on my own and say what I can't say to make you laugh or just because it went viral. You have not engaged in digital blackface. You've used fucking internet memes. It's not the same thing. It's incredible that they're making digital blackface out to be such a massive racial issue in this article that it's apparently equivalent to legitimate actual racist blackface that took place in American society. It's such a widespread, horrible problem that's such a racial issue that they can't even fucking define what it means. Usually if something is like a legitimate societal problem that like needs to be addressed and people have to band together to take care of it, we can all come to terms on like a common definition of what that problem is. But because this isn't a problem and it's not a real fucking issue, there is no definition for it because it's not real. It's a word made up for people, by people, who want to perpetually feel offended. Who want to perpetually feel like they're a victim. This is a victim complex issue. I'm sorry, this isn't even a racial thing, you know what I mean? 95% of black people would look at this and fucking scoff at it because it's actually insane to think that this is a legitimate real problem going on in society. There is legitimate instances of racism occurring every single day across this country, no matter where you live. And this is where our racial focus needs to be. This is how we're gonna mend those relations between races and come together as one? No, absolutely not. And it's meant for it to not be that way. What these people are pretty much actually arguing for is a form of digital meme segregation where white people can't use reaction gifs and pictures and whatnot of black people, even if it's just memes, because that would be racist, right? These people actually want the internet to be so segregated that entire races of people don't use each other's pictures or memes or whatever. That is actually the most fucking brain dead thing I've ever heard in my life. You know, the world has fallen apart. Climate change is killing everything. The fucking risk of World War III breaking out any moment is still there. The banks are collapsing. There's fucking trains derailing everywhere with hazardous materials. And we're all arguing about digital blackface. Guys, it's over with. The simulation is won. The American experiment is dead. We're done. I don't know, man. Anyway, with that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel. Follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at SubTheOptimus. Unless you're a white kid with a black person as your profile picture, you digital racist. Make sure to check out Shoptimus down below. We have actually no digital blackface on our store. It's a policy. Thank you to my Watch Optimus subscribers as well, who I've had a very deep talk with about digital blackface in the comments of those videos. So thank you for your support. Don't be racist. And with that being said, this is Optimus. About to go commit digital blackface uh, and signing out.